Hi everyone, it is Saturday, February the 28th. It's one o'clock in the afternoon and um, I thought I'd make a real quick video. Uh, I tried making this before, it was 22 minutes long, so I had to remake it because I don't know how to edit yet. I'm still new to making videos and uh, I couldn't post it on YouTube. Um, so anyway, uh, today instead of talking about the symptoms of MCS or how I feel when I'm, ha I'm reacting and having a flare up, I just wanted to do a little education maybe just to kind of talk about the different terms for this disease. Uh, I did a poll on a support board that I belong to on Facebook and I got information from different people. I will have to say that these are, none of these are official. I've not done a whole lot of digging into these different things and so a lot of what you're hearing are my opinions. I will try to state it that it's my opinion. Um, Anyway, uh, so if you disagree with something that I'm saying, uh, obviously if you're going to tell me there's no such thing as MCS, please don't post because I live it. I know it's there. Uh, save your, uh, you know, venom for somebody else. Um, but if you have, if you're thinking that a, a name I'm talking about is incorrect or there's a history about it that's incorrect or if you have any questions, do not hesitate to post and ask them or private message me if you're seeing this on Facebook or whatever. So anyway, really quick, I'm going to talk about, first of all, I'm going to talk about, the first one is MCS, and that's what you'll hear me refer to, just because that's the one I'm used to, this is the one I prefer at present. I feel like it's the best known uh, acronym, it stands for Multiple Chemical Sensitivity, so see, it's easier to say MCS. Um, I think that most people have heard of this, or if someone's heard of this disease at all, they're going to have heard this name. Uh, some people don't like it because of the word sensitive. Um, at the end sensitivity because people think oh you're just sensitive you know it's kind of like oh you know like oh you have your little sneeze you're a little allergic uh, this this disease kills people um, people within our home community have died recently uh, the body can become so overloaded with toxins that the organs shut down that people die from massive organ failure so it's not a joke it's serious yeah, uh, this one is CS, uh, sen it just basically chemical sensitivity, it's just a shorter version of that. Some people feel like the word multiple is just not necessary. Um, when I went, whoop, there we go, when I went to St. Louis and saw an environmental illness specialist and got an official diagnosis, this is what I was given, uh, only he did add the word severe. I, he, I was diagnosed with severe chemical sensitivity a year ago. And that's just because um, I, I reacted to over 40 of the items that he had on his little checklist. Um, so this is used by doctors a little bit more than the MCS. Uh, so you might have heard of that. Um, people have noticed that it's our environment that's causing problems. So this is a term that you might see, environmental sensitivities. Um, it, or ES, people like this one because it kind of is a more of a blanket uh, name. It talks, about, it covers uh, environmental illnesses, uh, people that react to wireless, uh, people that have EMF sensitivities, so that's like reacting to electrical devices, um, computers, TVs, microwaves, uh, routers, um, so they like this one a little bit better. Some people prefer this, so you might have seen that. Um, you heard me mention an environmental illness doctor earlier, EI, so you might see uh, that uh, listed. It stands for environmental illness. People um, have figured out that it's the environment that's causing, our environment is causing this, and it's not just talking about going outside, it's the, the environment is where we live. Um, and again, like I said, uh, you might see doctors use this more. Um, and so if you're looking for a doctor, if you're going to Google looking for a doctor in your area, um, and I might do a video on this later, but uh, you'll be more likely if you Google environment to, in, environmental illness doctors, you might find more hits than you would if you just put MCS doctors. Uh, CBI stands for chemical brain injury. Um, it describes what happens to us. Our brains are injured by chemicals. Uh, so I kind of like this one, but a lot of people, um, well, some people didn't like it because they felt like it talks about only the brain and, and we react so differently. Like, for example, um, my joints hurt after I've been exposed. Um, so that doesn't, you know, you'd think, well, that's not the brain. But my thought is that the brain is injured and therefore all of our body systems are controlled by the brain so that may be uh, may be more accurate than some people think but again this is a personal thing everyone chooses how they want to describe it and there, I don't think there's anything right or wrong I think we can all choose what we want um, okay moving on this is an older term um, SBS 
stands for sick building syndrome. Uh, it points towards uh, so where, where people were starting to notice early on was that um, people were reacting after working in these little, you know, stuffed office buildings, newer buildings full of new carpet and uh, no good airflow, lots of people next to them with uh, lots of perfumes and, and things on, uh, uh, new computers and chairs and, you know, all that stuff off-gassing around them. So they kind of picked up on this early. I don't think that people use this term very much anymore, but some, you know, there's some people that like it. You might see that. Um, we've got two that are kind of controversial. There's Agent Orange Illness and GWS, Gulf War Syndrome. Obviously, the Agent Orange illness talks about the people, mostly men, I don't know, there might have been a few women, but mostly men that were soldiers in the Vietnam War. They were, um, they were sprayed or they, were, they worked in the area where Agent Orange was sprayed, and Agent Orange was a defoliant, um, a massive chemical defoliant that they sprayed to reduce the jungles so that the, peop the, Viet the Viet Cong couldn't hide from the American soldiers. And um, anyway, they are finding now that second and even third generations removed are showing signs of the same illnesses. Um, uh, kind of a personal story, I'm adopted so I don't know my birth father, but I have wondered about it because when I did some research I noticed that I had a lot of the symptoms the second generation people get and that my two of my kids have a lot of the symptoms that third generation uh, uh, people get. So, who knows? Maybe someday if I get to meet him or his family, I'll find out. Uh, the Gulf War Syndrome, more, that's more recent. Probably more of the viewers will um, remember this. A lot of people were coming home from the Gulf War. They were really, really sick. Um, there's no name for it, but I, I know that after 9-11, there were a lot of people that were sick. And um, in fact, the doctor that I'm going to be going down to Dallas to see Dr. Ray, he treated a lot of the 9-11 victims. Um, same thing. Toxic chemicals asbestos, dust, dirt, mold, that type of stuff. Um, we also saw, an, just on a side note, we saw an increase in MCS symptoms after Hurricane Katrina. And then like in my hometown, we had a tornado come through and uh, then it rained for like five days afterwards. And um, we had a lot of increase in mold and then there were a lot of people that were getting sick also. So, sorry, off on a rabbit trail. Uh, there's TI or TE, excuse me. I keep wanting to say I. Uh, toxic encephalopathy and this is in my opinion, more of a description of what happens because our brains, encephalopathy means our brains are swelling and toxic is obviously the cause. So this is more of a what happens to our bodies as opposed to the name of the disease. But here's the thing, the AMA and the CDC recognize TE as a legitimate thing and it is used as a, there's a diagnostic code for it. So you might see uh, doctors use this a little bit more. It's a little bit more successfully used uh, in dealing with Social Security. So if you can get a doctor to say you have this as opposed to MCS, you're going to have a much smoother road. Plus, the general public at large seems to respond better to that because it's a medical sounding term. This is the most recent tilt. This is the most recent thing. Uh, there's some talk in the community about changing MCS to TILT. Um, I personally could get behind this 100%. It stands for Toxicant Induced Loss of Tolerance. And it's really a good description of what happens to us. Because of toxins in our lives, we have reduced, uh, we have lost the ability to process toxins. Everybody's exposed to toxins every day. The human body is designed to filter it and flush it out. There's lots of different systems that do that and I'll talk about that some other time. But people like me, we can't and instead it builds up again that's a whole nother discussion uh, and here's the last term and this is not necessarily the name of the disease but the word canary you might see me refer to people as canaries that is what we call ourselves most of us agree that we can be called canaries there's like one or two people that kind of get all weird about it one guy uh, felt that it was depressing because the canary always died um, it refers to a practice in the 1800s uh, when miners um, would put a canary in a little cage and take it down into the coal mine with them because the canary would react to the bad air or to gases much quicker than a human would and people could get out. Um, there are some folks that believe that us modern day canaries are actually higher up on the evolutionary ladder than the rest of the, uh, the universe and um, I don't think I agree with that but it's an interesting thought because 
uh, rather than this being something that uh, is bad, perhaps it's something that's good that our bodies are, maybe everyone will eventually be like this and then the people will quit putting toxins out in the world. One can hope. So anyway, uh, yay, I reduced that by half. I think that's pretty good. We're at 10 minutes. So this is my, I'm going to sign off for now. Uh, if you stayed with me, I appreciate it. Um, I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, like I said, post a question down below. Down there. <laughs> Sorry. And um, let me know what you have a question about. I'll try to answer it. Uh, if you are seeing this on my GoFundMe account, uh, remember I keep asking for prayers, shares, and donations. Um, share my, um, or pray for my, for me and my journey to Dallas, and also share this uh, video. Share my GoFundMe account with your family, your friends. Uh, the more exposure I get, the better off I am. Uh, more uh, awareness is going to be put towards MCS, and then obviously possibly more donations to help me to get to Dallas to see the specialist. And uh, if you're seeing this on my blog, uh, subscribe. And um, just want to remind you that every time you make a choice to use a hairspray or a perfume or a plug-in or a Febreze, by the way, that stuff's really toxic, um, you're making a choice for yourself, you're making a choice for your family, and you're making choices for me. So please choose wisely. Um, I want to thank you for for watching my video and uh, God bless. Bye-bye.